In today's video, we're going to separate notes using Tapping Grace Notes. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody. I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel, I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please give the video a like. Think about subscribing to the channel, sharing this with any other pipers you might know. I also give Skype lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. In the description below, there's a link to the PDF we have right here. It's free, so go ahead, print it out, put it on a tablet, have it in front of you so you can follow along. So lately I've been pairing my videos with different whiskeys. I did want to mention that I am not sponsored by any of these whiskeys. Um, some of them belong to friends, some of them belong to me, but uh, Oban, in this case today, is not sponsoring this video. But today we are going to be enjoying the Oban Bay Reserve Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, the Game of Thrones Night's Watch Edition. So I guess I'm taking the black. So what do we have here? It's nice, it's nice. It's very peachy, kind of stone fruit kind of flavors. It's lighter than I would expect from such a, a dark bottle over here. And while I can imagine the Night's Watch would enjoy anything, I was thinking... It'd be a little bit smokier, peatier, maybe a little heavier, but it's it's lovely, a uh, very fruity, very yeah, very fruit forward, but a lovely dram right here. In a previous video, which will be linked in a card somewhere up here, I was using lifting grace notes to separate notes of the same pitch. A lifting grace note is when you lift your finger, that lifting motion being the impetus to cause the sound. Today, however, we're going to be using tapping or striking motions, sometimes even called slurring motions, though I'm not quite sure why. If you know why, comment below. So these are motions where we're going to be separating the notes by tapping our fingers rather than by lifting them up and off the channel. For tapping grace notes, the scale is basically broken up into two parts. You have the bottom hand where every note taps down to a low G, and you have the top hand where every note taps just one finger down. D is the one exception. There is a light D that's going to use one finger tapping to a C and a heavy D that's going to use all the fingers striking down to low G. They do sound different and they have a different effect to the music, so it's nice as someone who's written some pipe tunes to have some variety in how we separate our Ds. I want to point out first that we can't tap or strike any notes from low G. There's nothing more that can be lowered. I did see uh, Stuart Little uh, use his knees to stop the holes on the side and get kind of a low E, which was a neat effect, but not terribly practical for the rest of us. But as I said just a minute ago, A, B, C, and D all strike down to low G every time. So in this exercise, we're first going to figure out how to get from the theme note, in this case A, down to low G cleanly without any runs or false fingering or crossing noises or anything. Now, in the case of A, it's pretty easy. It's one finger. So we're gonna start G grace note on that note, down to low G, up again to an A, and then we are going to tap that finger. We're going to do that twice, then we're going to move on to one lifting grace note, and then three successive taps of that finger. The metronome app here is Tempo by Frozen Ape. It's a great metronome, but any metronome on a phone tends to work well. If you know how to use your metronome, just do that. And you can go ahead and repeat that. I do have repeat signs written in here. Do what you need to do. If you're struggling to get a good, solid, clean low G, you might want to focus on those first two bars to really exercise that motion down to low G before you go into the repeated tapping in the second half of the exercise. Let's move on to B. Now for B, a little trickier because now we have two fingers involved. So as you're going from B down to low G, I want you to think in this lowering motion, you really want to concentrate on that pinky coming down before the ring finger. Yes, ultimately we want both coming down together, but a lot of times if you think together, you get that. And we don't want that. Then on the way back up, it's the opposite. It's all about that ring finger coming up first. And maybe not first, but together. But again, if I think together, I often get a run up. We don't want that run up. We want nice and clean. Low G taps on B. We want to make sure as we're playing that the grace notes and the taps both are landing smartly on that 
metronome click. The metronome click and the sound of your grace note, whether it's a lifting grace note or a tapping grace note, should be one in the same. They should happen at the exact same time. If you find that's not happening, bring the metronome tempo down. I'm at 75. Pick a tempo that's going to work for you but make sure that you're playing it on the beat. This exercise is not terribly valuable if you're just going through. Yeah, you're going through some of the taps, but you need a good solid sense of tempo and rhythm to really command this instrument. So use your metronome, make sure you're playing with it. I also want to address, we could absolutely tap a low A. We just don't. I haven't seen it in any music. It simplifies it by having one tapping motion we go to from any note, with again the exception being D, where we can have a light or a heavy. We'll get into that in a moment. But on B, it's always going to be the low G, at least in every tune I've ever seen. Pause for whiskey. With a little bit of time, there's a little bit more iodine, a little bit more salt, not like overpoweringly so, but uh, with a little bit of air and a little bit of time, uh, it's developing nicely. So still very fruit forward in a delicious way, but uh, yeah. Moving on to C. Just like on B and A, C, we're going to be going down to a low G. I guess we could have done a one finger. That would have just been awkward. We're going to do both of these. And because the pinky's already down, most people find this one relatively easy. But if you do find some noises in here, it's likely the middle finger coming down soon as you're going down and hearing a slight B or on the way up the other way where you're hearing a slight B on the way up instead of if you notice my fingers, my middle finger is higher than my ring finger, and that's on purpose. I'm not actually looking for them to be completely even. I want this finger to be the one initiating the motion up, so it's higher, and on the way down, I want this one to hit first so I don't get a run on the way down. C. Again, feel free to repeat the first two bars or the second two bars or the entire line. Do what you need to do so that that line is good, clean, and accurate. Next up, the heavy D tap. A vast majority of the striking motions or tapping motions that I have seen from D are this heavy one with all three fingers. The light one, it's a much lighter sound, and I think this is maybe just more impressive. It's my preference most of the time. There are times I like a light strike but for the most part i use the heavy strike so again that's all the way down to low g again chance for a run if you start with your d here with that pointer finger higher you're going to have a better chance of success and i actually have just a little bit of radial motion in my wrist as i'm doing this i'm not just isolating my fingers i'm kind of bringing my pointer finger up by actually moving my wrist slightly Let's see if i can get a good angle of that See, it's not, I'm not turning a door handle. It's not a lot, but every little bit helps and keeps my fingers from having to do all of the work. Let's get on with it. So for the rest of the scale, we're going to be tapping just a single finger, and we're going to start again with D, now going to the light D. So this time we're going to be just tapping the one pointer finger down. Again, it's a lighter sound, but it's quite lovely, and it can be quite a bit quicker. I find myself using this a lot in jigs and reels, faster tunes like that. But they both show up in the pipe music, so you want to be equally proficient at both. Moving on to E. This is going to be one of the most common of the tapping motions we're going to do. It's still a single finger motion, but you notice it's going to a low A. So on E, if you're properly covering, and you should be, when you tap that one finger, you get a low A out. These single finger taps are 
simply easier than the multiple finger taps. You only have to coordinate one finger, so that eliminates the possibility of a run. All you have to really make sure you're doing is covering the hole completely when you tap. You don't want it so light that you don't really get good coverage. You don't want it so long that you get a big tone of a note. We don't want... Those A's are a bit too long, and it sounds more like a short melodic A rather than a separating A. Again, this is a good time to address the pinky. So in the previous video, I was talking about with lifting E grace notes using that same finger here, figure out where your pinky likes to be for that, up or down, doesn't really matter. Find the one that works for you. But maybe it didn't really matter on that one. On this one though, you might find that having it underneath might make it too tight or it might be just fine or you find it up above might make it too loose. So play around with your pinky position when you're doing these E taps and figure out which one you think is gonna work best for you. All right, moving on to F. This is gonna be the middle finger. For high G, we're actually gonna start with an A grace note, which is gonna be slightly difficult because it's not a true high A, it's an A grace note. So your thumb will be off, immediately close down down to an F, and then we'll be tapping that pointer finger. High A, we're gonna use primarily sweeping motions. We'll be getting into that in a future video, which again, will be linked up here when it's ready. And just like that, you have tapped on all of the notes of the scale that we're really going to use. Again, with high A, we're gonna be using some sweeping motions of our thumb primarily, so we'll be getting into that next time. Well, I hope you got something out of this video, and if you did, please think about giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, all that stuff. It helps more than you know. And if you have any comments about how you go about separating notes, please leave them below. If you want to go the extra mile, I do have a Patreon. You can go ahead and head over. There's a link in the description below. It's a monthly donation, completely voluntary, but it goes a long way to helping support the channel and keeping me making videos like this. If you want a more personalized instruction, go ahead and head over to www.mattpiper.com or email me at the email you see right there. I'm now teaching folks from all over the world and it's fantastic. I love having the opportunity to, um, I don't know, share well, what I know about this with the rest of the world. So let's get you going. Again, everyone, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and until next time, cheers. cheers.